Hi, I'm Daz. Another tape recorder. Yeah, I know. Um, this has been sitting um, in a cupboard for some while um, since I picked it up from secondhand shop. I'm guessing it's from very early 70s, perhaps late 60s. Um, it's a stereo cassette recorder with built-in amplifier. I don't know yet if it's manual level control or not. Very basic, eject, record, no pause control whatsoever. It's made by Crown and it's got a Crown Corder and if you can see this okay, if you're watching HD, it's got the uh, typical early compact cassette logo here. Now the strange thing about this beast it actually runs on batteries as well, uh, 9 volts, so I'm guessing this is not going to have more than a couple of watts output. Massive uh, place here for D-cells. It's obviously designed for different voltages, um, so I'm going to have to check that before I do anything. Just looking around the back, zoom in. Um, loudspeaker out. I know this is a monitor so I don't suspect this has got variable monitor. There's AC DC so it's got a fixed mains cord. It's a bit inconvenient if you're running it on batteries I guess. Uh, there's a socket for a tuner, uh, my microphones and remote and there's a NUX input as well or perhaps there's an output. I don't know at this moment but uh, yeah so it's an interesting machine but I do have the tuner unit as well which uh, connects into it so now I suppose it's a cassiva with this added I've got no idea if this is even functional any of this equipment so first thing I'm going to do is have a quick look inside and check that voltage selector well this is interesting looking inside this it's the very much wooden circuit board construction um, that a lot of the Japanese stuff had in the early 70s so the belt is still there it's reasonably tight but it looks like it's got a dent or two in uh, power transformer there is the voltage switch it's a couple of uh, rectifiers so I guess it's uh, a tapped transformer it's the main smoothing cap interestingly uh, one side of the switch is used for main switching, the other side DC. Here's the input switch, and that's where the aux is connected in. I noticed there's two 20k in series with it, which is intriguing. So maybe it is an output, but we'll find out. Typical sort of fixed together with tie wraps type wiring. Uh, just don't carefully be careful, don't uh, knock any wires off unless you've photographed it, which I haven't done yet. Um, that capacitor looks like it's a Tarchi one. There's a bit of a clue, but uh, yeah, very, very interesting. Don't know what's in this metal box. There's a couple of presets, unless it's a preamp or something. Um, motor, no idea. Could be centrifugal. Uh, centrifugal. <coughs> centrifugal. Can't even say it now. Type motor, I guess, rather than a DC one. Anyway, I'll bring, I'll bring it up um, slowly and just see what happens. Well, I've brought the power up and no smoke so far, which is good news. Um, interesting about the motor. It reverses for rewind, so it's the, one of those sorts of mechanisms. And you can no doubt see the uh, lump in the belt and hear it. Okay, so I've brought the power up now. Um, there is some life in the cassette recorder, though I'm just watching it because the front spool has stalled a few times due to the loose belt. But um, yeah, rewind, fast forward, but not very enthusiastic again because of the belt. Um, right channel left channel well it could be a dirty head or a head problem but 
or perhaps electronics, but that's very, very uh, faint. So we need to look at. So we know the left channel's not so good. Uh, tuner. Well, it's a nice healthy crackle, but there isn't much life beyond that. There's a hint of something there. Yes, AM has pulled into life. Probably need some contact cleaner on the... Uh, can't hear much hit his. Ah, it's burst into life now. I think we need a bit of contact cleaner there. Quick look inside the tuner. Um, looks like I've got to take these screws out to take the top off. There's the FM 300 ohm aerial. So, um, and the compact polygon type, trend, uh, type tuning capacitors. It's got these um, blob top type transistors. I know they can be unreliable. Um, Notice some of the transistors are Hitachi again. Ferret aerial uh, for medium wave. Um, no doubt some components around here for the stereo decoder. It's not an IC one at this age. Um, so to get to the uh, get to the switch, I'm going to have to take all this out, unfortunately. Oh, and this is a uh, the switch which is just is it in shot? No, it's just out of shot. It's a local DX switch, so whether that's sensitivity or whether it's um, something to do with muting or something, I'm not sure. But uh, I might get this to pieces. Yeah, you can see the screen is becoming detached from the plug here. You can see the screen leads and the positive and negative going back to the tuner. Just checking the uh, FM tuner out. Um, bit contact clean has fixed it, but I don't think it likes wide deviation. You can see the stereo pilot light. I'll play something a bit heavier. Um, I think we can see that lamp flickering a bit. I'm wondering again, this is not so good for um, either the IFs out or it's not so good for modern music which is very loud all the time and compressed. I really struggle to get this PCB out, trying to work out how the record playback mechanism works. Well, it's a bit weird really. Um, you've got this lit you've got two record playback switches and this little bit here moves but that wasn't the problem I couldn't get the circuit board out I hadn't done two screws here and everything was rattling around I thought well, this isn't right is it what it turns out is here it's a little a little knob and you turn that and it's threaded here and that of course makes contact with this record playback mechanism and that's why I couldn't get the board out. It, I just saw that and I suddenly realised there's a small lever here that catches this to put it into record playback. Now, I've heard descriptions of the Philips mechanism and I must admit this does look a little bit similar to the Dynatron as well. Um, you've got a small belt here and the larger one and as you go into rewind and play playback you can see that wheel being moved so yeah that's kind of interesting so looking at the circuitry we've got here we've got uh, four output transistors a pair of output transformers and driver transformers so this is very much in the realm of uh, transformer technology still I'm wondering if these are the bias oscillators for the left and right channel. There's a Tarchi and Sanio capacitors in here, and again these blob top transistors. There's a couple of very small metal cased ones there as well, which is intriguing. So anyway, now I've got this off, um, I should better get at the belts, and, s and also clean the record playback switches. I'm still working out how on earth I get to the volume controls without having to completely dismantle this, but... Uh, 
changing the belts is a case of loosening these brackets, this bracket here and the spool here, so I could change the counter and drive belt and motor drive belt. So, yep, they're replaced and we get a lot more grip now, so with a bit of luck it'll play much better. Okay, so it's back together. I'm now going to try a test recording. Right, so it's now in record and I'm now going to adjust the recording level to about there. That's not far wrong. I'll just zoom into the meter so you can see it. That's just outside the red, so it looks about right. Now, I've put it in record, and it has actually muted, um, because I have the monitor switch in the off position. But you do have two positions where you can uh, monitor the, rec um, the recording as you make it. Those two positions there, as you can hear. Um, interestingly, you can only put it in record when it's in the tuner position, so that's quite interesting. Um, you've got a left and right switches, you can see the recording level on the left and the right. So what happens is when you press stop you get absolutely deafened. Rewind. And then playback see what we've got. So not too bad for a unit that I've just discovered is 1969. Um, I had a look at the capacitors and uh, they're not too bad condition actually. Uh, most of them have risen in value slightly but not a huge amount. Um, so we know this is a 1969. It, it, it counts for you know the way the cassette mechanism is and uh, what's inside. But an interesting thing, I never owned a Cassiva before so I guess this is the closest I've uh, got to owning one. Um, but it's a very very interesting unit. So that was the Crown Corder SHC44 from around 1969, a portable Casiva, <laughs> closest you got to a portable um, stereo radio cassette I guess of the age, but I guess it's quite advanced for its age, but anyway, I'm reminiscing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.